sitting up tall, closing the eyes. <clears throat> Taking a few um, uh, chin tucks, so chin in and back. Things a few times. I have to notice even like when I'm in meditation, my chin ends up going forward just out of habit, you know. So it's good to like get that uh, awakened, awakened through the, the front and back of the neck. <clears throat> Maybe take a little bit more motion with the head. Loosen up the neck a little bit. We can roll the shoulders. We're just loosening up before we before we sit and chant. And feeling the sitting bones downwards, the crown of the head upwards. We're always working with uh, direction, uh, the direction of energy, which way are we going? And so there's usually this um, opposite sense, two-directional two directional situation. Relaxing the face and then tuning into the breath. Deepening the breath. Make sure the belly is working here. So as you're breathing in, belly is expanding out through the rib cage and the chest. Breathing out, chest, rib cage, belly drawing. Palms together. <clears throat> Om, I bow to the presence of the divine within, our true and highest teacher that lives in and around us as being, consciousness, and bliss. It is ever present and radiates peace, lighting the way. To transformation. <clears throat> Nidalambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchirananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Nidalambaya Shivaya Gurave Sachirananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Shanti Shanti Let's begin in table posture, hands and knees. If this ever creates um, too much sinus pressure when you have the, the face down, um, then I will recommend that you can you know, do the same thing that we're doing, but 
with the the face in neutral or you could do this from seated you can do this you know in di different positions so be creative uh, knees underneath the hips wrists underneath the shoulders inhaling will expand the belly and then the head will just lift slightly because we're we're expanding that rib cage at the top of the inhale exhaling engaging the belly drawing it down or drawing the head down slightly we're not going to really um, uh, force the spine up or down quite yet and even when we do that we want to do that very gently so inhaling feeling expansion belly dropping because of gravity and we want to fill it up and then exhaling engaging the belly now we're working against gravity pulling it in and toning a little bit as we're going through so continue Make sure you have weight in the fingertips too, so it's not all in the wrists. So really waking up the belly and the breathing system here, right? And that's not so much about forcing the spine any which way. Then as you go through, maybe you exaggerate the motion a little bit so you can exhale and just round a little or just focus on letting the head go and then you'll feel a little bit of opening around the upper spine and then inhaling, maybe shifting the tailbone up a little bit more. My wrists aren't ready for this, so you know, notice if something's not ready relieve the pressure don't bother you know like getting to the point of feeling pain so in a moment we're going to find a neutral spine and we're actually going to go moving into uh, thread the needle without getting all the way down so you might need to separate the knees a little bit and then as you take the next breath in from a neutral spine we'll inhale the right arm up now keeping the left arm straight, thread the right arm underneath the left. So check in and make sure that you aren't bending the left elbow. Okay, once you correct that, then we can begin and continue. So we'll inhale, arm reaches up, exhale, arm thread through, left arm stays straight. How about we just do this for a minute rather than counting how many we're doing? Let's just continue. And then we will maybe lift one more time and then we'll start with the other side. But the first one will hold a little bit. So right hand down, inhale, lift the left straight arm, thread the arm through, keep the right arm straight. Make sure that elbow is extended and not bent. Then when you feel like you have it, we'll continue for one minute. As you're going through, you probably can sense the activity of the belly. Right? The core is doing some work here. You can feel it shifting as you go. One more, actually two. And then we'll go ahead and bring the left hand down, 
We're going to get off the hands for a moment, separate the knees a little bit more maybe, and then begin to lower into your child's posture. Move the wrists around in circles. And then maybe with the arms extended, you flex the wrists and point, and then maybe start to flex the other way. Just kind of give some motion here. And then settling in, we'll take five deep breaths. And we'll rise up to table. How about one more thing on hands and knees? Bring the knees under the hips though. So we're gonna go through that spinal balance, balance variation where we're shifting uh, between opposite limbs. And first we'll lift the right leg and do your best to keep that hip dropped, right? So really like turning that hip downward and for me, I have to kind of feel like the thigh turning inward to keep it uh, even. Then we'll pick up the left arm. And the, so the left arm as high as the shoulder, uh, leg as high as the, the glute, not higher than the hip. And then we'll lower everything down and start with the left side. So pick that leg up without turning the, the hip open to keep the hip closed. So this is for uh, hip health, so we want to be careful. Feeling that thigh rotate inward, and then picking the right arm up. I tend to not take my arm high up enough, and I can only know that because of the, <laughs> the camera, the video. So check in and see. And then we'll go ahead and lower. And now we'll, we'll continue for a minute, inhaling, lifting, right leg, left arm. Exhaling, lowering down. Continue. We are strengthening the core as we're moving through this. And that's our minute. Let's come into downward facing dog. A little bit of motion. Legs need a little bit of uh, movement here, a uh, little bit of heat. So we're going to create some heat right now. So when you're ready, pick up the right leg, step the right foot through bring the foot down the top of the mat uh, let's keep the back heel lifted lift the head look forward like you're in a, a runner's lunge for a moment then bring the hands right to the thigh so we're just kind of halfway now we feel a lot of weight on the right leg right hip and then we'll lift the trunk all the way up now we've got a little bit more weight towards the the back leg so more evenness between the legs pick up the arms let the palms face each other take three deep breaths We're gonna be bringing the hands down and setting the left palm down, sliding the left foot further back to come into a twist. 
picking up the right arm. Separate the feet a little bit more, keeping right knee over right ankle though. And then we're going to come back into a three-legged dog. So you can bring the right hand down, pick up the right leg, and then bring the foot down, inhaling the left leg up. I want to open my hip up here, but I also want to see maybe keeping it closed. So check in and see what, what you know, when you do that, what happens. Then we'll bring the left foot forward. Now we're coming to that runner's lunge first. So hands down, still looking forward. And then we'll bring hands to the thigh. Actually, don't lift all the way up though. So hands to thigh. So we're kind of lined up with that right leg. Feeling lots of weight on the left leg. And then we'll pick the trunk up. Send the arms up. So here we can talk about that. You know, are we, are we going forward here intentionally that we were in a moment ago? Uh, now we're trying to really lift up. And then what do we feel? Some bit of a back bend, right? So pull the pelvis in a, a little bit here. And then we're going to come into that twisting dragonfly in a moment. So take another deep breath. Or this is a twisting lunge. Bring the right hand down, nice and low. Lunge, pick up the left arm. Bring the left hand down, pick the left leg up to that three-legged dog, and then set the foot down. A couple deep breaths here. Okay, we're gonna do this again. Pick up the right leg, step the foot forward, Come into first a runner's lunge, so it's picking up the chest, it's going to stay down. Bring the hands to the thigh, so just come up just slightly. That trunk is lined up ahead, everything lined up with that back leg. And now we'll start to rise back up and lift the arms up. Let's lower the left hand down, pick the right arm up. Now we're gonna add a little something. So we're gonna come up to the left fingertips and crawl forward with the left hand and then draw the left ankle behind the right ankle. Three breaths. We're hovering the left foot. Bring the left foot back, the right hand down. Ah, then let's come into a pigeon for a moment. Shin comes down, right leg, or left leg slides back. Roll a little side to side. And then when you're ready, start to uh, lower down a, a little bit. Go halfway first. We're going to be here just for a few more breaths. Maybe you're able to lower a bit more. All right, to come out of this, we're going to rise halfway, roll to the right hip, and then sit to face the side of the mat, taking the legs out into a V formation. All right, from here, sitting up nice and tall. 
bring the hands in front, keep the trunk, uh, this is, might be a good spot for blocks, keep the trunk nice and uh, firm, straight, and then just walk forward so we're, we're hinging forward, we're not bending forward through the spine. Keeping the toes shifted upwards rather than turning in. Keeping the ankles flexed. Just about three breaths so we can kind of sense the legs need some more warmth before we're going to sit in these postures. Nice deep breath, maybe releasing out through the mouth. And then we'll be coming up. We're going to shift back into downward facing dog where we'll start with the left side. Okay, so when you're ready, pick up the left leg. Step the left foot forward. We come up to the runner's lunge first. Remember, right toes are facing forward. I should have mentioned this before. They're not going to turn out. Then bring the hand to the thigh, just straightening up according to that back leg. And then we'll rise up, take the arms upwards, again, finding the trunk upright. So even if you feel like you're kind of like leaning back almost, get to that point first, then straighten up. Draw the chin in slightly. Yeah, we're going to go into that twisting lunge here. So bring the right hand down, pick the left arm up. Palm faces out. I'm going to rise up to the right fingertips, crawl the fingers forward, and then bring the right ankle behind the left ankle covering that right foot. Strengthening the glutes. <laughs> and we'll bring the left hand down and take the right leg back. Bring the palms down. I think we went right into a pigeon from here, right? I don't remember exactly. Uh, so you'll bring the left shin down. I'm going to just change directions here, but you can stay where you are. So we're staying up for a moment, swaying a little bit. And then when you're ready, start to make your way in. Turning that right hip down, right? So hips are level. Deep breaths, even and organized breath. So when our breaths are organized and ordered, uh, our other parts of ourselves match that breath, the mind, the thoughts, the emotions. And eventually, the way we structure our physical lives, our schedules, our homes, our office spaces. We're going to take a couple more deep breaths. <clears throat> and 
come up halfway, roll to the left hip, and then we're facing the probably other side of the mat for you. Taking the legs out with that, into that V formation. <clears throat> Hopefully feeling a little bit more able to, you know, lift and then to hinge forward, the toes uh, shifted upwards, coming into the nice, nice stretch. Right, come up halfway and walk over to one leg. You can keep the hands to the inside of the leg for now. Walk to center, over to the other leg. Again, hands to the inside. Just bring the hands back to center. See if we can walk a, a little further forward. <clears throat> and then let's walk the hands in. Here we're going to cross the ankles. <clears throat> so we're in seated, but we're going to come to standing from here. So bring the hands down uh, under the thighs. Push into the hands as you also bring your weight forward towards the feet pushing into the hands and then lifting the bottom. And then here we have the feet crossed. Let's just sit here for a moment with the ink, uh, the, uh, the knees slightly bent, the back straight. And we're gonna switch and take that front leg uh, behind so it becomes the back leg. Again, knees are okay bent, back straight. And then we're just going to walk to face the front of the mat and pivot the feet so that they're now facing forward. That was fun, simple, but fun, right? <clears throat> Separate the feet to the edges of the mat. Take the hands and clasp the opposite elbows. Let the head go. I think today is a good day for a squat. So we're going to lower in a moment. Let's take two more deep breaths. And then here we'll start to lower the hips down, bring the elbows to the insides of the knees to pry them open, maybe palms together. See if you can drop the hips as, as low as you can drop them. It's okay if they're lifted. Keep the heels down. If it's very difficult to keep the heels down, one uh, fix, which actually Randy brought to my attention, is bringing blankets underneath the heels or even blocks um, and keeping the toes on the mat. <clears throat> then you can rest uh, and have the support without having to have the most open uh, hamstrings and calves and hips. All right, so we're gonna take five more breaths. If you can, take those shoulders back. Lift the hips up and then keep the knees bent, right? But begin to lift the trunk up. So it's kind of like we're in a chair posture, but the legs are fairly separated. Now start to draw the knees towards each other, but they're not going to get far, right? You can keep them basically where they are, but you're activating the inner thighs. <clears throat> and 
and start to straighten the legs. Straighten the trunk. Now, as you noticing when you lifting, doesn't this area feel really tight? It feels like it's more comfortable to be here in the seated position where these muscles shorten up than it does when we're in this position. So just kind of let things smooth out. Let those muscles lengthen. Maybe just shortening them, I want them to lengthen. And then we're gonna work on lengthening them a little bit more. By going into a variation of dancer posture. So we can take hold of a wall or a chair. I think we had this possibility last year, or last week, not last year. Um, I know we've kind of been doing this a little bit. So uh, let, we'll start with the right leg <clears throat> with or without the support of the wall. Another option is to be in front of the wall so that we can do the little bit of leaning forward, um, taking the leg back. So see what you wanna do and you can always shift in the middle of any of this. But we're gonna have left hand to left hip, grab a hold of the right foot behind. See if you can keep that left thigh nice and engaged. Draw the shoulders back, draw the knee downwards, and pull the pelvis inward. Maybe take the left arm up. Maybe you shift the hand so that it is lined up with the foot. Okay, that's one option. Another option is to take it to the inside of the foot, which maybe is a little intense and doesn't work, or maybe it does work, so just check in and see. And then maybe we take that arm slightly forward and lift the foot. Again, you can have the, the wall in front of you. You know, find the step, find the point that works for you right now without trying to force the body into an unnatural position for it that being relative for all of us. And then we're gonna to start to come out in a moment, take one more breath, and then we'll release. Now we'll just go into the other side. Before we do though, let's check in and see, you know, maybe roll the ankles. You wanna notice the difference between the right and the left sides of the body. And then we have, we could start with hands to hips, feet hips distance apart, shift the weight to the right leg without sinking into the hip. Keeping the thigh engaged, lift the left foot up, taking hold of it. And then here we are, turning the knee down, left knee down, pulling the pelvis in. Maybe taking the hand and lining it up with the foot or taking it to the inside of the foot that really gets the chest nice and open and then activates the upper back. Maybe that right arm lifts. Maybe you stay at any of these points that we already reached, or maybe you go a little further. Two more breaths. And start to come out. Releasing. You can roll shoulders, take a little wiggle. Ah, we'll come back to the top of the mat and actually take the legs out alongside the mat. Nice wide stance. We're going to work a little bit more towards the uh, inner thighs. So let's. Uh, here, let's first um, turn the left toes out, sink into the left knee, then lower the left hand down to the, uh, you know, right under the mat or right to the mat underneath the shoulder. And then we're gonna pick the right arm up. So we have the right foot flat right now. This is of the first variation. You might look up past the right hand. You might look forward. And we'll bring the right hand down and then walk to the center between the two feet. You can shift the feet different directions here, pa fa uh, facing the side of the mat. 
Notice the left side of the spine, right side of the spine. Come up halfway, lengthen, bring the hands to the hips and rise up to standing. Turn the right toes out. We're gonna lunge in to the right knee. Bring the right hand down and then pick the left arm up. And then we might look past the left hand. bring the left hand down walk over to the center adjust the feet to face the side of the mat release down come up halfway hands to hips rise all the way up to standing okay turn the left toes out again then this time we're going to lunge into the left knee but pick up the right foot all but the heel and then come back down, left hand down, right arm up, but then we're gonna switch arms. Right hand down where the left arm is, and then pick the left arm up. Looking forward. Release the left hand down, walk back to center, lower. Come up halfway, bring the hands to the hips, rise all the way up to standing. Turn the right toes out, uh, start to lunge in. We wanna pick up the left foot all but the heel and bring the right hand down. Uh, actually, how did we do it before? Yeah, so I think we're starting this way, right hand down, left arm up, and then we're going to switch. So just notice how this feels. Bring the left hand down where the right hand is, and then pick that left arm up, looking forward. And we'll release the right hand down. Walk to center, feet facing the side of the mat, or you might turn them in slightly and get the heels stretched a little bit. You might clasp opposite elbows with the hands, let go. And then we'll bring palms down, come up halfway, lengthen, hands to hips. Inhale, rise all the way up. We'll face the front of the mat, bring the hands down around that front foot, and then come all the way down to the belly. You're gonna release the right foot back, come all the way down to the belly. We're gonna take some cobra press-ups today. So bring the hands underneath the shoulders, keep the legs relaxed and separated from each other. Elbows are back. All right, when you're ready, Pick up the head as you inhale, the chest, and then push into the hands and lift the trunk up. The hips are low if not touching the mat. You want to sink into the spine, relax the legs, relax the glutes, and then lower down. We're going to do this for a minute. So when you're ready, begin again. Head, chest, then press into the arms. Sink into the spine and release. One more. And then releasing down. 
can bring the forearms down. Take a couple breaths. Let's actually take the arms forward and feel them extend from the mat. And it's been a while since we've done this. So let, let's do what we did standing, but um, on our bellies. So we're gonna pick up the right foot, take it towards the glute, and then take the right hand to it and draw it in. The left arm can be used to help pillow the, the head, one side of it. And you have that foot, we're drawing it in, and we're gonna pull the pelvis in. Now take that hand and just pick up the shoulder, the right shoulder. And then we'll release switching sides. So we're holding that foot in towards the glute, pulling the pelvis in. And then we'll start to pick up the left shoulder again. And we'll bring the foot down, release. So let's bring the forearms down. We're going to go into Sphinx for a moment, not the full minute. So elbows down, trunk up, legs relaxed and separated. Elbows can go forward or inward, just find the right spot. We're gonna take about four deep breaths and then we are going to take a plank or on plank to strengthen the core. We've done some good strengthening already today, but let's do our, the one that we can feel it even more, we're really fighting gravity. Okay, so when you're ready, begin to lift the hips just slightly here so that they're off the mat and you have the support of the knees. And this might be it, and you stay here and breathe. If you need a little bit more, you can roll over uh, the toes on one foot and straighten that knee, or both toes and then straighten the knee, both knees. Remembering that we aren't taking the hips higher than the shoulders, they're gonna stay nice and low like an incline. We're going to lower down, come into Sphinx for a couple breaths. Back into your version of a forearm plank. Again, into Sphinx. Back into that forearm plank. This is the last one. This time we're gonna be coming to the knees. Take one more breath. And then knees into table, walk the knees up, into table, knees separated a little bit. We're gonna thread the needle this time all the way. So pick up the right arm, thread that arm through, come down to the shoulder, right side of the face. Whatever variation you go into with that left arm, straighten the right arm, pull that shoulder back.
And bring the left hand down, pick the right arm back up. The hand down into the other side, left arm up. Threading through. Just train the left arm and pull it back. And bring the right hand down, left arm back up. And bring the hand down, let's transition to seated. <sighs> Sitting up tall, we'll take a little gentle twist here, ankles crossed or foot in front of shin. And for the, tw the twist, really, I feel like um, ankles stacked is actually better. And we'll take left hand to right knee, right hand behind, get tall, and then turn to the right. Now take the eyes as far right as you can. And we'll come back to center. Okay, turning to the left, right hand to left knee, left hand behind. Picking up the spine, the head, turning to the left. Take the eyes as far left as you can. And come back to center. Okay, once you're in center, close the eyes, let them rest. And we'll open the eyes. Let's take uh, the right arm up, bend the arm, left hand to right elbow as you draw the elbow back and center. Pick up the chin slightly and then draw the chin in. We'll switch arms. Remember to reposition the head so that it's helping with the stretch and then at the same time you're strengthening the back of the neck. Releasing. All right, let's work with the, the neck for a moment. So roll the shoulders and then fold the hands into each other, thumbs touching. Turn the head left, right. Head to center, up and down. Head to center, draw the chin into the neck. So we're not really lowering the head. This way we can stretch the very top of the neck. Head to center, lift the right ear. Bring the head to center, tilt the head left, right, and then pick the left ear up. Head 
at the center, tilt left, right, maybe circle, drop the head, shake things out. And then we're going to bring the head back to center. One more time, we're going to take the legs into a V formation. And then we'll start nice and tall, walking forward. Keeping the spine straight, no bending in the spine. If you feel like you have to bend, then you can either bend the knees instead or don't go so low. So this time we're going to be going uh, into a deeper variation when we go through that twist. Very carefully though. Just one minute breath. And then we'll come up halfway. Walk over to the left leg. Grab a hold of the outside of the leg. This might be plenty right here and I could see I'm actually starting to bend a little bit so I have to lift a bit. Okay. So hand to the outside of the leg. That might be good. Then you can take a hold uh, or take the left hand behind the back. A little bit of a twist. Turn the head slightly to the left. And we'll come to center, walking over to the, the other leg. Left hand outside of right leg. Still a straight spine. Feel that twist first, that extension in the left arm. And then maybe you take that right hand behind the low back, turn the head to the right. And we'll come back to center. Hold in for another breath or two, just as far as far forward as you can go. And then we'll come back up. We're gonna come all the way down to lying on the back. First, a quick little reclining pigeon, taking right ankle on top of left thigh. Draw the left leg in, holding it in. Our right foot is flexed. If you want to take a different variation of this, you're more than welcome to. Let's switch sides. And we'll release the legs. Take the feet to the edges of the mat here. Then draw the knees towards each other. If you have a block close by, actually, bring it underneath the head. So it's going to be kind of like stre uh, stretching the, the back of the neck for a moment. And then... Um, whether you have the face elevator or not, we're going to do a little uh, face facial massage, help the sinuses. So let's start by taking the fingers, uh, you can take first and second fingers, to the bridge of the nose, put some pressure there, 
and then trace that down underneath the eye sockets, through the cheekbones, and towards the sides of the face. Let's do that again, up towards the bridge of the nose, down the nose. This time go a little lower from where you were, really feeling those cheekbones, and then going towards the top of the jaw. And then let's do that again. Down, around the mouth, towards the jaw. Okay, this time go to the upper lip, and right underneath the nose, separate the fingers, trailing them round through the mouth to the jaw. Now we'll go to the chin, press in, and draw them across the jaw. Okay, we're going to go to the, the uh, place between the eyebrows. And then we're going to actually trace along the eyebrows, that, that eyebrow ridge, pressing in, taking that through to the temples. Good pressure in the temples. Okay, let's go back a little higher than where we were, the center between the eyebrows, and drawing up so now we're above the eyebrow ridge, really pushing in. There are some sinuses up here, really pushing in, and then drawing it out towards the higher part of the temples. Now the center of the forehead, drawing across towards the hairline, then up higher. And then all the way up towards that hairline, all the way across. Take a deep breath in and out, and then we're going to release the um, block. But if you have a headache, you can stay in this position and just bring your hands, left hand to chest, right hand to belly. This is a good position to help relieve a headache. If you're ready to come out of this, just release the block, release the feet. Take the arms alongside the body, palms flipped up, walk the shoulders back first, and then release the weight of the body down. We're going to take a deep breath in and out through the mouth. So we're preparing now to rest in Shavasana, so allowing the body to sink, not needing to control it. You're going to take your attention to the feet, to the shins, the calves, and just notice how they're feeling. And let's take that attention back to the feet. How are the feet? What sort of sensations are you experiencing in the feet? And now go up a little bit more to the ankles this time. And then to the shins. And then to the calves. Now let's work our way up to the knees. Notice the right knee and the left knee. Now the thighs. The right thigh.
back of the head on the surface below. The whole scalp. The very top of the head. restfulness of the body, we're going to take your attention and shift it towards the center between the eyebrows. I'm going to read to you a sentence from destiny of the soul to remain young even though the body may grow old. It is the earthly destiny of the soul to remain young even though the body may grow old. It is the earthly destiny of the soul to remain young even though the body may grow old. It is the earthly destiny of the soul to remain young even though the body may grow old. Without changing anything quite yet, just begin to become aware of the breath again. And little by little, start to deepen the breath. As you're breathing, feeling that idea of those words that I brought in and maybe distilling it to a couple words like youthfulness of the soul 
The soul is always young. And then little by little, bringing movement to the hands and the feet. Taking the arms and circling them behind, stretching the feet forward. And then bringing the knees into the chest, wrapping them around the knees. So you could rock a little side to side. And then finding your way up to seated to seal our practice with monk. palms together. May all people be well. May great masters protect the earth properly and justly. May one be eternally fortunate with cows, meaning wealth and wise ones. May all worlds be happy. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. I honor the light in you that is the same light in me. Namaste.